Lumpia is the quintessential Filipino party food that is begged to be dipped and eaten by the masses. As you can tell, it's been pretty cold lately, and I love tropical food, Polynesian food, Asian-style food, any of those. And one of the favorite things I had when I was in Hawaii was lumpia. We used to eat it all the time. And so I'm going to show you how to make it two different ways, one savory and one sweet or dessert-style lumpia. Lumpia is a fair amount of prep work, and I always prefer to involve family and friends in the cooking process as much as possible. Most of the work is wrapping them, but there is a fair amount of chopping too. This makes it go a lot faster and the people can enjoy the process as well. Yes, this is an outdoor grilling channel, but I hope you'll forgive me for using the stove today. Pull out your trusty cast iron steed and heat it over medium heat. The full recipe is down in the description below, but I'm adding chopped onions, carrots, as well as cabbage. Then saute them until the onions are translucent and the carrots are tender. It'll take you about 10 minutes before I set them aside. I could do this in two different pans, but I'm making a really big batch and I need to cook the ground pork separately. Once the ground pork is browned, add green onions and garlic followed by salt, pepper, and ginger. Give it all a good mix before deglazing the pan with some soy sauce. That'll get some of the brown bits off the bottom and into your filling. Add the veggies back in and mix it all together and you'll want it to cool slightly before the next step. Cut the spring roll wrappers in half diagonally. And yes, I got the wrong wrappers, but that's all they had. And lumpia is better than no lumpia. Now, wrapping the lumpia isn't hard, but it takes some practice to get it right. The most important thing is that you don't overfill them. A heaping tablespoon is more than plenty. Then fold the two corners over and make a little pocket. Start rolling it over, but the trick is to keep it from pushing out of the bottom. As you roll it, the ends aren't gonna stick on their own but you can use whipped egg and I found that water works just as well to seal them. This is an example of one that is just a little bit too full, but you can make it work. Now, if you're smarter than me, you'll put water on the end before trying to roll it so that way things will go a little bit smoother. Get a system going and move quickly and of course, get another set of hands to help. I made my first banana lupia. And before you know it, they'll be ready to go. You can make these a few hours ahead of time and fry them later if you leave them in the fridge. You might notice that I'm a little bit more dressed up than normal, and that's because I'm doing a collaboration with The Kitchen Queers. We're using the hashtag Game Day Buffet with other creators to be able to put out our best food that we would have at a Super Bowl party or other big game. If you want to check out their videos, just search for the hashtag. Banana Lumpia is the same process but much faster to make. You need ripe jackfruit from an Asian market, as well as some plantains, and not just any plantains, but ripe ones. The green ones taste like potatoes. They should be yellow, and that means you may have to buy green and let them ripen for a few days. Finally, use some brown sugar. The jackfruit tastes like a mix of mango and peaches. We're gonna cut them up into strips to make them easy to put in the lumpia. The plantains don't peel like normal bananas, so cut off both ends and then cut them into thirds. That'll be about the right size for lumpia and the right size for your wrappers. Cut those thirds in half lengthwise, and then finally into quarters. They should be pretty easy to peel at this point, and making banana lumpia is way faster and easier than the other one. Just add a section of plantain and a strip of jackfruit and sprinkle them with a good helping of brown sugar. Wrap them up the same way as the other lumpia and set them aside. The snow stopped in time to set up the fryer in a snowbank, which will help me keep any of the grease splatters off the concrete. Heat the oil to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius and do a test batch of one lumpia. If it doesn't brown, your oil is too cold, and this will keep you from ruining an entire batch. Once you have the temperature right, add six to eight lumpia at a time, giving each one its space so they cook evenly and you don't drop the temperature of the oil too much. You're gonna cook them for three or four minutes and you may need to flip them halfway through. Pull them out when they're golden brown. Let the oil drain off a little bit and then put them on a paper towel. Mrs. GTE took them inside to 180 degrees Fahrenheit oven to keep them warm while I fried the next batch. There are two sauces you need for this dish. The first is banana sauce, which is a lot like ketchup. If you can't find it locally, I left a link in the description. And the second is a sweet and spicy chili sauce that you can find just about anywhere. Pour both into a bowl for easy dipping. Just don't double dip them. When you plate them up, make sure you keep the savory and banana lumpia separate. Most people like the regular ones, but the banana ones might be a bad surprise if they aren't expecting it. They're my favorite. Just let people know about the amazing awesomeness that they're about to consume. What are you planning for a game day buffet? 
let me know down in the comments below.